it's Kathy Cassidy. I'm here to read you chapter 31 of Love from Lexi. Um, it's the penultimate chapter, so we're really getting to the drama of the story now. And before I begin, um, just got a couple of shout outs to do today. One is to Elizabeth in the Netherlands, Amanda in France, to Jessie in Oban, and Michelle in Lancashire. And uh, yeah, tomorrow's the last chance to get a shout out. Um, and I think I'm gonna save that one for, for my lovely friends, I don't know. Here is the in-betweeny bit of in the chapter. It says, here we go, love Lexi. And I think it's, it's written on a mirror. So chapter 31, and it's called Hold On. An hour later, we're down at the park wearing our artist ribbon wristbands and scoping out the main stage. The area in front of the stage is still fenced off because the main events don't begin until two, but even so it looks daunting. In a little while, we'll be up there sound checking, then playing for real. It doesn't seem possible somehow. The festival is packed already. Little kids are tripping about dressed as Alice in Wonderland or Harry Potter or Little Red Riding Hood. And families are lining up to take pictures with the big painted character boards that have sprung up all around the park, poking their faces through the cut out holes and morphing suddenly into Peter Rabbit or the famous Five or Wimpy Kid. A slinky green dragon is snaking about through the crowds and someone dressed as Willy Wonka is handing out golden tickets that turn out to be forms to sign up for a library card. The librarians are in costume too. The grey-haired assistant from Bridge Street has transformed into a very convincing Beat Beatrix Potter and others are disguised as Dumbledore, the Grothalo and Angelina Ballerina lurking about by the book zone. A blackboard advertises storytelling at set times throughout the day and right now a queue of teens is building up for the Ray Kelly event. Bex has to grit her teeth and look away. And a crowd of excited middle-aged women are clutching books to be signed after listening to a talk by best-selling author Miranda Marsh, an old friend of Louisa Winter. Boo McClay and Joshua Chikelu are doing events too and a TV camera crew are filming a pop-up poetry slam as we pass by. The telly, Marley says, and I nod, half wired and half terrified at the thought. Outside the fun zone tent, students from the local art college are working with kids to paint a huge image of the BFG and we're careful to give the music zone a wide berth when we hear the whiny, grating voice of Charlene Scott screeching out over the loudspeakers. Whoever is in charge must think the same as we do because the volume is reduced abruptly. The others exchange glances but I cannot find it in me to hate Charlene Scott now. I've seen her crying, vulnerable. I think that underneath the tough girl veneer, she is as lost as any of us. Mandy and John will be here soon, Bex reminds me, with John's friends from Yorkshire and Mandy's mum and her friend. If you think this is busy, think again, it's just the start. My parents are here already, Sasha says, no pressure then. I hope mine don't show, Samia comments, they don't know I'm doing this. They think I quit the band weeks ago when they told me I couldn't do that photo shoot at the library. If word gets out, I am in big trouble. No way, Sasha said. You should have said. Let's hope they don't find out. I check my mobile for the hundredth time. OK, it's time to go, I say to Marley. Are you OK? He squeezes my hand. Better than OK, thanks to you, he says. I'm good. Let's do this thing. Heading backstage feels slightly surreal, as if we've sneaked in illegally to stalk Ked Wilder. We're treated like professionals by the sound crew, trekking up onto the stage to set out our instruments and work out placings. It has already been agreed that Dylan will use the drum kit from Ked Wilder's backing band to make the transition easier and because it's about a million times better than his own battered kit. He sits down behind it and runs through a few beats, his face lit up with the thrill of it. When the sound crew realise that we've never played in public before and don't actually know what we're doing, they're kinder than you would expect, asking all the right questions and helping us to spread out across the stage in a way that makes sense both visually and musically. 
unexpectedly I'm at the front sharing a mic with Romy and Happy. Marley, Sasha and Bex are right up there too. George is happier sitting further back and parks his stool and cello near Sumia's keyboard while Lee and Sammy settle for a space near the drums. Jake, terrified he'll mess up, tries to hide in a corner but Marley tells him there's nothing much he can get wrong with only a triangle to play. Mime if you're worried, he says. We run through back then a couple of times so the sound guys can check the levels and it must sound okay because the crew are grinning now, giving the thumbs up sign. Nice vibe, one of them tells us, and when everything is checked and everyone is happy, they tell us to relax in the green room while they sound check Ked Wilder. Why is the artist waiting room area called the green room? Marley wonders as we approach the backstage tent. It's not green, it's not even a room. It's got, it's all to do with the colour your face is going to turn as our nerves kick in, Bex tells him, and he sticks his tongue out at her. We flash our wristbands and go inside. The buffet table is piled high with sandwiches, fruit and chocolate. Bottles of fizzy water and cartons of orange juice are crammed into ice buckets to cool. Wow, Sasha says, is this real? It's definitely real and I think we should eat, Dylan says. Some of us had to skip breakfast thanks to my annoying brother. I take a paper plate and collect a few bits to nibble. I'm too nervous to relax. Two o'clock is bearing down on us like a runaway train and it's terrifying. I spot Miss Walker with Joshua Chikelu and Ray Kelly and Bex runs over to meet Ray and have a brief fangirl moment. Two older women wander in. One turns out to be a famous TV actress and the other is the author Miranda Marsh. Then Louisa Winter sweeps in with Ked Wilder and we're wide-eyed and speechless in the presence of this 60s pop legend, tall and stringy and much older than the pictures in the newspaper would have us believe. He's still dressed time warp style, as if he's just stepped out of a boutique on London's Carnaby Street in mirrored shades, skinny black jeans, a turtleneck sweater and winkle picker boots. He has a black suede fringed jacket slung casually over one shoulder and the same mop top haircut he wore in the 60s. It looks slightly odd on a man who must be in his 70s, but I have to admit, he looks like a star. He and Louisa have made today possible, called on friends, courted publicity, cashed in favours, even dipped into their own pockets to stage this festival. All for the libraries and all because they believe that people don't have to sit back and let bad things happen. Children, Louisa Winter calls out, waving. Oh, let me look at you. Yes, I am loving the styling. Clever. Are you excited? We fall over ourselves to tell her just how excited we are, how thankful for the opportunity, how grateful for her help. But she just laughs. Oh, you'll be brilliant. I'm certain of it, she says. My good friend Ked here has been looking forward to meeting you. Ked, I've had you to myself all morning and you're probably sick of the nostalgia trip. Stay here with the kids and relax a minute. I'll get us something to drink. Louisa wanders away and we swarm round Ked, shaking hands, babbling compliments, telling him how thrilled we are to be his support act. I'm probably your biggest fan, Marley gushes, barely able to stand still. I've read your biography from the library, of course, and I've tried to model myself on you. Music is my life. I'm ambitious. I'm determined. I really want to get to the top. You certainly sound like a younger version of me, Ked responds, laughing. I was probably a little full on back then. I've learned to slow down, but still I have to admire that youthful enthusiasm. Ked Wilder pushes his mirrored shades back on his head and without them he looks less starry, more like someone's granddad dressed up for a fancy dress party. We write our own songs, Marley rushes on. All originals. Lexi and I work in partnership, then build up the arrangements as a team. We have a big lineup because we wanted a full, rich sound. Something powerful, something different. I think you're really going to like it. I'm sure I will, Ked Wilder says. I'm looking forward to hearing you play. This is your first big gig, right? First ever gig. I blurt out. I think we're all terrified. Ked Wilder laughs. 
If you weren't a little bit scared, you wouldn't be human, he tells us. Just channel that energy and pour it into the music. Here's a tip. When you're up on that stage, act like you belong there. Believe that the audience are there for you and play them the best blooming set they've ever heard. Blow them away. Then Louisa Winter is back with two glasses of champagne she's conjured from somewhere. And a photographer appears and starts taking shots of us with Ked Wilder. And before we know it, one of the sound guys appears and tells us it's time. Romy's face is white with fear and George looks clammy and sick. And Marley looks so hyped, I think he might explode. I lean in for a hug, avoiding his ribs. Thank you, he whispers, for everything, Lexi. Let's go and be awesome. I'll be in the wings to watch you, Kedwalder says, and Miss Winter squeezes my hand and tells us she'll be introducing us, and I'm so high I think I'll either fly or faint. I can't tell which. We all walk outside together and we can hear the crowd see that the space around the stage that was empty earlier is now overflowing. My limbs seem to have turned to water. Miss Winter strides onto the stage, a small, fierce figure in crumpled jade silk. The red hair streaked with white and bound up with twisted jade and turquoise scarves that trail down her back like pennants. The crowd stills as she takes the mic and welcomes everyone to the festival. We've never had a festival at Milford before, she announces. Thank you all so much for coming to support the libraries and to see my good friend Ked Wilder play his first live gig in over a decade. Ked spent a lot of time here back in the 60s and he loved reading. A lot of his musical inspiration came from books and a lot of his books came from libraries. This festival was Ked's idea and shortly we'll be hearing him play, but right now I want you to listen to a group of young people who care so passionately about the library cuts. They have been at the very heart of this protest. These young people are not just campaigners, they are musicians too. Please give a warm Milford welcome to brand new teen talents, the lost and found. There's a roar of applause as we walk on stage, but I'm shaking so hard the tambourine rattles in my hands and Happy has to take my elbow and march me over to our shared mic. I look around at the others. George is biting his lip. Jake winks at me and Romy looks as if she might cry. Sammy just nods in my direction, his eyes storm dark, still wearing the threadbare coat in spite of the warm day, in spite of the promise he made to Marley. I can't help smiling, and Sammy smiles back. Then Marley steps forward to his mic, and the last of my fears fall away. Hello, Milford, he yells. It's a privilege to be here today and to share our music with you. We'd like to say a huge thank you to the wonderful Louisa Winter and the legendary Ked Wilder, as well as all the everyday heroes who run our brilliant libraries and work so hard to keep them open. Without them, this festival would not be happening and we wouldn't be here. We're the lost and found and we're a new band, barely two months old. All our songs are original and this is the first time we've played in front of an audience, so be kind. Our first song is called Back Then. Take it away. Lee's trumpet blasts out the intro and the others come in one by one. And by the time Sasha starts to sing, I'm not shaking anymore. I'm dancing, leaning into the mic with Romy to sing the harmonies. When the last chords die away, the applause begins. And that's when I know that all the hard work was worth it. That Marley was right all along when he said we had something special, something different. It flies by way too fast. People do not walk away. They keep coming, leaving the sideshows and stalls and tents to come and listen. I can't help wondering if somewhere out there my mum might be watching and listening, but the thought lifts away as quickly as, as it, uh, just as quickly when I catch sight of Mandy and John, arms down at the front, crammed next to the stage, arms waving, faces shining with pride. When we come to the end of our last track, Library Song, everyone goes crazy. Cameras flash and people shout for more. We could do a dozen encores if we wanted to, but we only have five songs. Thank you, Milford, Marley yells into the mic. You have been the best audience ever. I hope you liked our songs. 
I hope you like our message from Milford Council. Save our libraries! The crowd roar their approval and start chanting for an encore again. Always leave them wanting more, Marley says as we run off stage, and I think by then we all want more. We all see Marley's vision of what we have, what we might achieve. We hug each other, laughing and crying, standing in the wings as Ked Wilder stalks on stage and the crowd go crazy. We are so high, it feels like the world is at our feet, like anything is possible. And before I finish, I'm going to read um, the next filler between the chapters because it kind of goes with that chapter. Um, and it's just a torn, crumpled piece of paper. It says, For a long time after you left, I thought you were watching me, looking out for me, Mum. I'm not sure I believe that now. But if you are out there, even if you're looking down from the stars, I hope you're proud. Love from Lexi. So that is the end of chapter 31. And please tune in tomorrow for the very last chapter um, when all the loose ends will be tied up. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope I just kind of want to thank you for sticking with this um, so far, um, right the way almost to the end. And I hope that a little bit of escapism each day has helped that lockdown to, to pass a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, I'll see you then. Take care.